everyone. Welcome to Lounging with Leone. I am your host, Leone. And this is the very first episode of my show. And I have invited a special guest, the Italian stallion. <laughs> I'm sure you're going to say my name wrong. Um, he goes by the name, the stage name, Ramon Mazinga. Oh, wow. Ta-da! See, I can speak Italiano. That's not Italian, but cool. Prodotto in Italia. <laughs> <laughs> I am prodotto in Italia, yes. Um, okay, Ramon Mazinga. Why the stage name, by the way? I have no idea. Um, Mazinga is like a giant Japanese robot. Oh. And like I an anime. Know. Okay. And Ramon is just a Spanish name. I was in a bar at some point and I had like mustache uh -huh. and somebody approached me and said, nice mustache, you must be Spanish. And I was like, sure, my name is Ramon. And yeah, now nice. I'm Ramon Mazinga. Okay, great. Um, I invited you as my first guest because you have experience in doing podcasts. Is that correct? To an extent. Define experience. Well, I mean, you've done a podcast before. You have a podcast. Yes. And I want to, like, pick your brain because one of my resolutions for this year is to become more confident in, like, verbal communication and having conversations with people. And I thought that maybe doing a podcast or a show of some sort would help me get that experience and become more good at talking to people. <laughs> You're doing well so far. Am I? It's all fake. I'm faking it. <laughs> so the main motivation why you want to do podcast is to improve your public speaking. I guess so, because I have a lot of like social anxiety when I talk to people and my mind usually goes blank. And What's I the root? Sweating. What do you mean the root? Of your social anxiety. I don't know. Why do you think you have that? Like what triggers it? Well, I'm getting triggered now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think it's just like, I don't, it's funny because like, obviously I'm quite public. I'd make videos and stuff like that. But in real life situations, I don't like having the attention on me. So you like having attention on you on video, but not live. I think so. Because I think with videos and stuff, you can kind of fake or fake it. Like in a sense, you can script yourself. You can present yourself in the way that you want to be. And I feel like myself in real life, I'm like sweating right now. <laughs> you can edit stuff out. You can. Is it a control thing? Like, are you a control freak? Am I a control freak? I do like to have a bit of control. Yes. What's a bit? Quantify. Yes, I like to have control. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the root of the problem is like control. I yes. mean, at least like going one level up. And do you think... Control of people's perception of me. I think that's what it is. Oh, it is interesting. So basically you're saying that you care about what people think of you. A little bit. Why? It's a very good question. I want to be liked as a person. So... Can we st stop the analyzing of me for no, a No, no, no. I mean, we're, we're, this is what uh, <laughs> I've been called here to do. Yes, okay. Why do you want to do a podcast? Because you need to improve your public speaking. Because you get social anxiety. Because you're insecure. Because you want to be liked. Because... Why do you want to be liked? Is this a form of need for validation is it yes i think i mean everyone wants to feel like a f like validated right like what they're doing is or who they are as a person yes but it takes like um authority figure like if you don't have in high regards the other person whatever their opinion is you would disregard because like i'm going blank now why <laughs> i don't know because <laughs> i am very much in my own head right now that's 
good if like, you you just need to bring whatever you find inside bring it outside that's how you pause? create content <laughs> can we pause can we pause <laughs> sure it's your show <laughs> oh my god why is it so hard what's cool why did you stop i'm sweating do you see the sweat Leonardo. <laughs> okay, let's switch. You go outside and switch and have a chat with Francesca. We're coming down here. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was going good. It was fun. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Are we still recording? Hi, I'm Leoni. Hey. I'm so nervous. <laughs> a few moments later Hello. yes dropped hello <laughs> are you ready i don't know now i don't want to do it anymore <laughs> why why not it's practice it is practice it's just having a conversation you get you gotta you gotta completely it's zoom practice. out of like you're being recorded yeah you know just having a conversation i forgot we were getting recorded what should i do should i Wear restart the podcast well, I think you need to have a serious um, focus on picking Francesco's brain, right? Because that's why you bring him here. And you go, you know, and, and he, at the beginning, was really solid, <laughs> really solid information you're given. Like, why, why did you want to create a podcast? Is this something that you want to gain out of it? Are you, are you curious about a specific topic or genre? And you made a very clear statement that you want to learn how to speak to people more naturally. And then plus with the camera on top, a lot of people freeze when, when there's a camera. Like, no matter how good you are, the moment there's a camera, press record. Like, oh, yeah. You can also think about it like uh, like it was one of your videos. So you can edit stuff out anytime. So just keep talking and whatever you don't like. Then correct, you, correct. you know what? I'm going to keep I'm gonna keep what I've done so far. <laughs> And then, yeah, and then continue. Show that I freaked out, and then come back in. <laughs> yeah. To yeah. show the actual journey, right? I, I think it's. To, I think there is a level of anxiety that, um, that plays into it, and, and I'm very similar. Like if I get nervous, I sweat like crazy, you know. But um, but if you're com- comfortable and confident, and you've done it many times, it, it gets easier and easier. Yeah. I remember my my first podcast my fucking head was like melting <laughs> well i was starting to melt yeah so. um, <laughs> and like uh, like i interview w- one of my idol luke uh, martin newman who is a two division one fc champion mma fighter and i was like <laughs> you know? but because i was naturally curious and i want to i just have a lot of questions to ask and i think that's what you got to come into leonie every time you can have a guest on a podcast or an idea you want to get off your your chest. And then once you're in that zone, it makes it easy. Anyway, I'll let my sister jump in. Sure. Nice talking to you. You too, man. Welcome back to your podcast. <laughs> All right. Hello. Hello. I'm Let's back. do this. How are you feeling, Leonie? It's just fine. Just, just stay in the zone and and stay ask. Just ask him, like, yeah. question him. Yeah, I'll question grill you. him. I'll grill you. I'm back. I've had my mini panic attack and breakdown. I'm back. I'm ready to learn how to not have a panic attack and breakdown. I think the best way is probably to keep going no matter what. Just like okay. disregard. Don't pay attention to your panic attack and just keep going. Okay. Even if I'm like drowning in my own pool of sweat. You know what I do when I'm having a panic attack and I don't know how to continue a conversation? I go like maple syrup. <laughs> <laughs> Just throw throw like random words. Okay. And whoever you're talking to is gonna go like, wait, 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 what? It's it's maple like syrup? it's like throwing a punch. Right. And then like it gives you time to, you know? Yes. Get your guard back up and ah! attack again. So what are we talking about? We are talking about podcasts. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> yes, and why I'm starting a podcast it was because to like challenge myself just then, but obviously I freaked out. Okay, that happens. Mm, mm, mm. Has that ever happened to you? <laughs> yes, a lot, plenty of times. Um, but again, I just try to 
keep going. And sometimes it's tricky because, you know, there are moments when you don't want to say things because you don't want to sound stupid, but the only things that come to mind because you're panicking are very idiotic things to say. So what do you do in that case? I don't know. When I panic, my mind goes blank mm -hmm. and I start to feel dizzy. Okay. And I'm, I think to myself, oh my God, I'm feeling dizzy and I'm panicking. And how do I get out of the situation before I faint in front of this person? Okay. <laughs> You're a climber, right? I am a climber. As so, you can see from my beautiful wall. Okay. I'm going to tell you a story. <laughs> okay. I was... In New Zealand and I widely misinterpret what a guy told me but what I understood changed my way of climbing right so I'm glad that I misunderstood what they told me so basically whenever I wanted to finish a climb that I had tried multiple times and I kept failing if I was thinking that it was within my possibilities, like not something like mm. whatever, great. Um, the next time I would do that climb, I would think about the climb as it wasn't a climb, but it was a sort of memory. Mm. Like this is not me climbing. This is the story of me having done this climb. So doing that mind trick, I kind of removed the possibility like failing is not an option because this is the story of me achieving what I want to do. And I try to apply that to panic moments in social context as well. Like whenever it does, it doesn't, it used to happen to me like when I was um, younger, but whenever I'm about to panic, I think the panicking is not an option. So right. I do literally anything. Like I I I if I have to, I would just like strip naked and start jumping around. Like whatever helps me to keep going and to avoid panicking. So yeah, if you remove the option of panicking, of going blank, and you do literally anything else, <laughs> ultimately <laughs> the more natural option is going to be to just carry on. Yes. Yes, I actually read, I've been reading a book about climbing and like panicking and fear and things like that. And it was very similar to what you just said. It's like, you've got to like commit to not panicking. Yes. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to commit to not panicking. And that's why I love mm, bouldering and climbing in general, because it's not just a physical exercise, but it helps a lot with mental health, with resilience, with... Uh, reaching your goal like it, it, it sets you in the right mindset that you can apply to real life yes. context because you're on the wall and if you panic you fall yes pretty much nothing happens because there's some mat underneath but still. well unless you're yeah true okay <laughs> <laughs> now what <laughs> so we're talking about podcasts and you yes. want to do a podcast because you want to challenge myself and it's good to challenge yourself, I yes. think, because that's how you grow as a person. Yes. So that's the opposite as, opposite of comfort zones. Yes. I like being in comfort zones, but I also want to grow, which is why I'm making the conscious effort to put myself in situations where it will challenge me and hopefully I learn something from it. What is that you like of comfort and what do you like of growing and challenges comfort is that i don't have to like there's no like imminent failure i guess like you don't have to worry about failing there's safety safety yes you're in the safety net you don't have to worry about something going wrong and embarrassing yourself which is something that is scary <laughs> because it connected again to the social anxiety social anxiety and caring about what other people think, think of you we'll go back to that but okay <laughs> <laughs> um and then the what i like about challenging myself and growth is that 
there's something inside me that's like I really want to like be a better person I guess or see w what my capabilities are and maybe there is a sense of like proudness in that proudness like look at what I can achieve if I put my mind to it it's like bragging bragging yeah but also like growth yes but you're bragging bragging to yourself or to others bragging to myself I think and as a as a consequence as a result of that I guess also kind of bragging to others but like like the reason why I share a lot of my achievements with other people, like when I go climbing or like when I go dancing or something, like I get a lot of people who watch my videos and they're like, oh, you've inspired me to do something. You've inspired me to go get fit as well. Or you've inspired me to continue living my life, even though I've had a really bad day. And I think having that impact, even though it's like on a small scale, it makes me feel like, oh, actually, like my life is worth living my the things that I do is worth sharing because it gives people like motivation in their life or inspiration in their life as well absolutely and climbing is a strong component in this as well uh, most individual sports I, I do jiu-jitsu as well but uh, the thing is it's never a challenge with uh, to me it's never a challenge with somebody else like when I cannot finish a climb the next day I try again mm. I want to improve for myself not to be better at that specific climb better than somebody else i just want to i just want to improve and once i can actually do that i can help other people yeah i can give advice i can uh, yeah i think it's it there's something strange about you know like uh some people are i prefer cats i prefer dogs yeah and other people are like i prefer individual sports i prefer team mm -hmm. sports mm -hmm. i never really understood the value of team sports <laughs> it's probably very bad and no i think i'm the same as you yeah. yeah but i wonder why is it like just our ego is it I don't know. Or is it that I'm bad at communicating with people with too? People? And, you know, <laughs> well, funnily enough, I like invited you because I feel like you are a good communicator. Am I? Yeah. Thanks. You're you're totally welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so you want to challenge yourself. Yes. And the ultimate goal is to become more confident. Okay, so this does, doesn't have anything to do with speaking in general. I think it's more like inner growth kind of thing, like personal development. Do you think I'm a good speaker? Yes. Oh, thank You're you. very <laughs> clear and eloquent. Oh, eloquent. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Whatever that means. <laughs> um, I, I, yeah, I think it, there is like, I, it's confidence. Like, I don't have the self-confidence to sit here and have a conversation with people without freaking out uh, even though like i know i have the ability to have a conversation but my fear and my fear of judgment maybe fear of i don't know is stopping me have you ever done any theater or uh never performances in public you sing right i don't sing <laughs> you play music um i do play music okay so Oh, maybe this is where all my social anxiety came from and fear of judgment. So in high school, I used to, I had my own band. I used to write my own songs. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and I would get my friends to perform, like help me perform it on stage. And I was known as the girl, you know, in high school as the girl who wrote songs and people would make fun of me about it. They would like bully me about it, about not just like the performance, like, playing music and stuff but about almost every like creative thing that I did I liked writing stories um and there was the girl that was just like oh Leonie thinks she's so good at writing stories but she's really crap and the same thing with like performing on stage and singing is like the, I had a nickname Miss Idol that people kind of like, like threw out there as like uh -huh, huh like she thinks she can do these things but she can't so I think maybe a big part of like my anxiety over doing these kind of things is like people's perception of me is like, oh, she thinks she's so good, but really she's nothing. I don't know. I had a, diff I, I was bullied in school, like 
elementary school, mid school, high school, all the way. And especially in high school, uh, people would make fun of me for whatever reason. Like there was no reason. Like there mm-hmm. were many reasons, but mm-hmm. nothing really significant. And I would, I think the way my coping mechanism was like, ah, like is even worth like bothering? <laughs> so I would just embrace it. I would just like, self-irony helped a lot. So I would mm-hmm. just like make fun of my, once I started making fun of myself the same way people were making fun of me, it was not fun to them anymore. Mm. Which was a very, very weird process. But at the same time, it kind of validated my... Pers- I was very popular in the end, in mm-hmm. school. And mm-hmm. I had, like, a, at the time, like, a very popular YouTube channel and stuff, uh, which was then deleted because I'm stupid, but that's <laughs> another story. Um, but, yeah, uh, it, it, it's about caring. I think I've always been very... Arrogant? <laughs> I can see that in you, yes. Maybe like, yeah. You got Let's a big ego. Yeah, I'm. I don't. I'm not sure. I'm. I'm. I'm not sure it's about the ego. But that's that's another thing. <laughs> anyway, um, I have very high self-esteem. Yes. So. Do you? If I think that people around me who mock me, who bully me, make fun of me, are inferior then i don't give a shit Mm. because you know they're just like "Eh." Mm. yes i think that is probably where the fear of judgment stems from but i've learned like through like therapy and through seeing a psychologist and everything that you know what other people perceive you like you don't you don't actually know what, how people perceive you until they actually like tell you right yeah yes yes but then i f- i feel like i kind of just assume what people think of me i do that too yeah yeah which is not good <laughs> okay arrogant is one thing assuming mm. is a different thing right because Without, I mean, the difference that I make in my mind is that with arrogance, you just think that you're right regardless. Mm. Assumptions are based on facts or deductions or hypotheses or hints or whatever signal that makes you start a thinking process. So if you're honest with yourself and if you're open to change and adapt your ideas with the more information that you get in, then being assuming is not necessarily a bad thing to me. So I don't judge people, Mm. but I think that I know everything about them the moment I see them. Mm. But I also know that I might be wrong and I'm very likely wrong. Mm. Like I'm pretty sure that I'm wrong, but I, I make my own picture of who they are and how would they act in certain situations and right. all of these informations but at the same time i know that 99 percent of the chances i'm wrong you're wrong but they need to prove me that i'm wrong so i keep talking to them i keep getting to know them and the more i know the more data i can use to change the picture of them that i have in my mind right so is that mentality how you overcome like like how they would judge you if that makes sense I don't care about that. Okay. Uh, I don't know. So then why do you make this like assumption about them? Because when you want to interact with people, it's always good to... <laughs> it's about empathy to a level, but also technical advantage. <laughs> a technical advantage. Okay. So, <laughs> so what's your assumption on Leone at the beginning? Oh, she's great. I was going to ask her. I, w- I was going <laughs> to ask this. Wait. <laughs> uh, she's amazing. Leon is stop. amazing. Oh, stop. <laughs> um, I got lost. So, <laughs> assuming things is bad when you are too much confident right. and you think that you're right. Right. Regardless. Mm-hmm. 
in my opinion. Okay. So, as my brother asked, what was your assumption of me when you first met me? You were very quiet. <laughs> and I guess my main assumption was that you were, were um, an introvert. Correct. And then, I guess we had a very informal meeting the first time we met. So it's so it it really depends on the context. Like I I tend to overanalyze people quickly if I'm in a um, business context because mm-hmm. I want to make sure that I say the right things the right way. The message gets uh, delivered in a clear way, I don't get misunderstood and all of that. Uh, But also I want to read the other person so I know how to play my cards. But when I'm in a more social context, I tend, I do it like subconsciously, but I tend not to do it when I realize that I'm doing it because it takes the fun out of knowing people. Right. Yeah. So I didn't analyze you that much. That much. Okay. No. And what would you say is your overall opinion of me now? And yeah. like, like, <laughs> yeah, cool. I'm just trying to like boost my own ego here. But like the fact that I'm doing a podcast. I really like that you try to challenge zone. yourself. Thank you. Well, I think it is important for everyone to challenge themselves in some way or another. I'm probably the, the, the wrong person to ask because I don't like comfort. Yeah, I stress yeah. out in comfort. Yeah. I just need uncertainty and struggle. So, <laughs> what are your challenges right now? What what's challenging you? What are you trying to overcome? Turning the tables around. <laughs> so many things. So that's a very good question. Um I don't have a clear answer and that's probably the answer. Right. So, I'm kind of lost. Right. You're just a little lost boy. Yes. <laughs> um, I, I'm trying to figure out... People say that you need to specialize. Mm. And I don't like doing that because mm. I'm very eclectic. I take interest in everything. Literally, like, if you tell me how this thing is built, I want to make a better version of this thing tomorrow. Like, right. So I'm going to study like how the spring is connected to the thing and what the center of whatever. Mm. Um, but then the day after, I'm bored. Right. Because like I know like probably 30% of this and I'm like, oh, I learned 30% in like a day. I can do it like if I keep going and <laughs> keep doing it. So I, I, But what I'm missing is that 30% you get in the first day and then the second day you get like 15% and the third day you get like five. So it actually takes like a lifetime to become specialized in something. Right. Um, so... I like to know enough of everything, but there is not enough time in life to be specialized on everything. So ultimately, just the other day, I realized that priority to me right now is to figure out a way how to, not how to manage my time better, because (laughs) I think I already do, but just how to get the most out of my time which right. is, sounds kind of similar but it's not no what's the difference it's not about time management but it's about productivity it's about yes value yes i think i read somewhere it was like the quality of your productivity rather than quantity of productivity so is that what you're looking for quality quality of my productivity yes because yeah. i produce a lot like i never stop produ- uh, as i said i freak out if i'm in comfort i freak out if i relax if somebody tells me oh just go to the beach and lie down in the sun and rest i, I just like a lot. i'm like let's go to the beach yeah no. <laughs> I, I just can't i need to be productive 24 7 but most of my I, what i realize is that most of the things that i produce are actually worthless sometimes most times but what do you get out of it what do you get out of doing? Oh, it's a feeling of satisfaction. Mm. It's it's it's, yeah. Well, I mean, I feel like that 
that's what I'm doing now with my with my podcast, my show is like I probably won't get that many views, but it's kind of like I want to do it because I will learn from it and I'll hopefully grow from it and I will have a sense of satisfaction that I did something, I achieved something. Do Even you, if it's a failure. Do you have an ultimate life goal or project? Yeah. <laughs> it, it, there is no right or wrong answer. Like you can say no and that's fine. An ultimate life goal or project. I mean, I have like many goals and projects that I want to do. Like I want to eventually buy a piece of land in the countryside and build a tiny home and do a like a Airbnb style thing with that. Um, another goal would be like I want to publish my book. Um, and another goal would be like maybe one day I want to get married and have kids. I have many goals, but like what would what is a life goal like? I don't know. Is there just like one specific life goal that you kind of like reach for and you know or do you just have like many different small goals or big goals? Either or. Yeah. So like one of the like doing a podcast was one of my goals for this year, for resolutions for this year. Nailed it. Yay. Well, let's see if we keep going with it. <laughs> yeah. But like I am I feel like I am the type of person that once I know what I want to achieve, I will take the steps to get there and I won't like my eyes are narrow focused rather than just like, yeah, I'm bored. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's not that I get bored. Most of the times I get distracted. distracted. I I get interested in other things at the same time. Yeah. And then I want to do those things and then my time management goes to shit and then Yeah. Yes. Mm. I lose track. But it really depends. And depends on momentum also like if things are going well on a certain project I keep doing that. And also depends a lot if it's like a passion project or a professional project. Mm. If I'm working on something then I just yeah. Yeah. Beast mode. I mean, I feel like there's a lot of people who are listening or watching right now who are kind of lost in their life with no direction. What would your advice for them be? Figure out your values. What it This reminds me of a podcast that I released a few days ago about what Is there a way to measure if your life the life that you're living are, are you succeeding at experiencing life mm. because it's not something that you can quantify and what i was uh, discussing with this guy uh, a philosopher from the states do you get more value from traveling a lot or from living your whole life at home if you in both cases two different people are equally satisfied with their lives like is there a better worse way of living your life i don't think there is mm. i think it's about being at peace with who you are and what you want to achieve so yeah. if you're totally fine and comfortable with but I- I- instead if you're struggling like if if you're here and you you're like craving something else if you're thinking i'm missing out on something If you feel that there is something not right in your life, then it, you have a problem. But yeah. some people can travel the world and get no meaningful experience out of it and yeah. no learning whatsoever. Yeah. Some other people can have a fully fulfilling life on this couch. Yes. Well, are you having a fulfilling time on this couch? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah, I know a few friends who are kind of like lost in their life. They're not happy with how things are but it's like what are they going to do to find that fulfillment to find that satisfaction when you don't know what that like what will give you happiness and this is another thing it's interesting how sometimes most times searching for what you need is what you need yeah and finding it it's pretty bad right there was a uh, a short episode made by Seth MacFarlane the mm-hmm. yeah uh about Willy Coyote fin- finally catching the road runner mm-hmm. and then getting depressed uh, 
right you know like you keep doing a thing for your whole life and yeah. then yeah that's your sometimes life purpose sometimes the destination purpose. isn't as great as you thought it would be yeah but it's the journey it's always the journey it's always the journey it's always the journey okay cool 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 cool, cool. <laughs> do you want to do the asmr part of my i brought chips i'll watch i'll listen okay I don't know why, but I was like, I want to do ASMR on my podcast. But do you need a special microphone to do that? Like a I don't know. I feel like you can hear it from here, right? Yes, but... So crunching bags of chips is ASMR. What? Well, this is the part where I tell you to plug yourself to the people watching and listening. What do you have going on in your life? Is this distracting? <laughs> a little bit. Oh, okay. Maybe my a ASMR segment will be a total fail. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know much about ASMR. Well, these are chips from um, IKEA. Because <laughs> I was at IKEA today. Um, it's called Fest Ligd. Brings flavor to the party. Potato crisps with pepper and leek flavor. Beautiful. Would you like one? No, thanks. Huh? I'm good. <laughs> so what's uh, uh, the theory behind ASMR? The theory is that... What's the concept? Like the concept behind ASMR? Yes. Some Should people know. get like really good feelings or like spine tingling feelings. When they listen to ASMR. Sometimes it helps people to sleep. Festlicked. Mm. Mm. Okay, Is well. the sponsor of the show, Festlicked. Well, that's why I was like hoping that if I introduce this segment to my podcast, right, um, that people would want to start sponsoring me <laughs> to eat their food <laughs> and snacks. But you shouldn't <laughs> give away free advertising to Festlicked if they didn't. It's my IKEA, it. IKEA sponsor me. You got, you got to go closer to the microphone. Closer to the fucking microphone. <laughs> Anyways, probably a fail, but whatever. Um, this is. I should have gotten like an Italian snack. It's Europe. It's close enough. Okay. <laughs> um, let's finish up this this episode. But before we do, please, Ramon Mazinga. Where can people find you? At home. Sad. <laughs> sad in my bed. Depressed. No. Um, yes. Sure. Social media. So YouTube and Instagram. Mm -hmm. Ramon Mazinga. Mm -hmm. Great. Here. Um, There's going to be some graphics here. Is there? Am I um, bothered enough <laughs> to make <laughs> graphics? Here. Ramon Mazinga. And before we go, please teach me something in Italian. Camaleonte. Camaleonte. What does that mean? Chameleon. Mm. Wonderful. All right. Thank you for joining me on the lounge. Thank, <laughs> thank you, you for, for being lounging. <laughs> thank you for being understanding of my freak panic attack. It's all right. Yes. It'll be and, fine. And yes. Okay. How Bye. do we end podcasts? Ciao. Ciao. <laughs> <sighs> I think it was good. Fuck my life. <laughs> <laughs> That's a festival, it's not bad. <laughs>